Well, I've come here to my favourite river, Hodder, in Lancashire, for an evening sea trout fishing. And the technique that one will use for sea trout fishing through the evening uh, depends largely on the river. Here I've only got one rod with a floating line on it, and that's enough for everything I'm going to do. But if I was on the spay, then I would be fishing a sinking line right through the night. Big river, fast river, sinking line. This case, a slower river, a shallow river, a floating line. Now, again through the evening, we're going to change fly as we go on, as things develop. So I'm going to fish the small fly in the fast riffly water until it goes dark, and then I'll change to big flies. A big medicine, silver fly, or a big sea trout stilts tail, a black fly, and fish those then through the night. The most important thing is that when it really has gone dark, and here in this valley, which is overhung by hills and, and forest, uh, it goes pitch dark here. As soon as it's like that, on will go the surface lure, because that will provide so much entertainment and hopefully one or two fish. That really is exciting fishing. And that's how I go about a night on here. So here we go. We'll start off with this little riffle here and see if there is sea trout sitting in it. I won't need the net and I won't need the wading staff until it's gone dark and we're fishing the deeper water. Slowly down. Slowly down to that position there. So we've got a little bit of space at the rear of the shank that we can tie things in on. Now, the rule is that you should tie materials in in reverse order. And the first thing I'm going to be winding, the ribbing, because that is the thing we're going to wind. So if we take the rib, and this is very, very, very fine oval gold tinsel, we can tie that in with two turns to the rear. Again, one turn back and another turn backwards. So we've got two more turns backwards towards the end of the hook, tying in that hackle. And red tinsel can be an absolute nuisance to get hold of. This is Christmas decoration, and one of the great uses of old Christmas decorations. Uh, you can use, uh, people have used biscuit wrappers, and things like this, but any red tinsel, flat red tinsel, and I've got a piece of flat red tinsel, and that is going to be the body material. So what I'm going to do before I tie the tinsel is to wind the thread forward to the front of the hook and cut off any waste at the front. Take the tinsel and tie that in where we started tying the thread around the hook shank like so. And then what I'm going to do is to wind this down the hook shank in touching turns. Making sure you don't trap any fibres in. Now when you come to look at the salmon fishing programme, you will see that I varnish, and we can wind this back in touching turns, tinsel bodies. With this one I don't. The reason is that I would have to wait such a long time for the varnish to dry and there's always danger of the hackle picking up varnish and becoming sticky. So I don't do. This is the one exception to that rule. Cut off any waste. And now we take the hackle pliers and wind the hackle. Wherever possible, I follow the turns of tinsel until I get to the front. And there, I make more turns forward, like so, and then make two turns forward in front of the thread. And then I can bring the thread through to tie off that palmered hackle. Cut away the waste. So we can see a palm and hackle with extra turns in front. We're now going to rib that palm and hackle, and whatever you do, don't go slowly through the, the hackle. If you go slowly, you'll trap things. So just go as quickly as you can. You're bound to trap some of the fibres in. Go quickly through. And this ribbing will, in fact, support 
the body material to prevent that from fraying. So take that through very as quickly as you can and tie it off. And then pull back the feathers, fibers at the front, to make a base for the wing. The wing is bronze mallard, and what I do is just take one feather. Don't try to do slips with this material, and if you want to see more information on tying feather wings, if you look at the Lake Flies uh, program, then we deal with them all. That is the gape diameter there, and if I go one, two, three, four, and make a slip in there, that is four widths of wing. I now will pull that back like that. That is four wing widths. And then cut off that web of feather. Now I put that on my knee. The knee is the perfect place to do this process. And you fold that once, like so. And you fold that a second time on itself, like so, and there you have a bronze mallard wing. So there we have a bronze mallard wing, which is a slip of feather folded and refolded. Measure for length, about as long as the end of the hook bend, pick it up and go one pinch and loop, 